and welcome to the Neo News Today podcast. I am your host, Dylan. In today's episode, I am excited to sit down and chat with Dan Shields, a community organizer, decentralization evangelist, and key resource in the Colorado blockchain community. Dan is the founder of CryptoRado, a resource and community group that connects all the various blockchain and cryptocurrency meetups, events, and participants. He's also a co-founder of the Open Economy Initiative, which is an education and outreach resource that aims to teach the basics of crypto-based financial tools. And Dan also hosts the Denver Blockchain Meetup every week, where blockchain enthusiasts of all levels can get together and discuss topics of their choice. From my perspective with Neo Colorado, it's through the CryptoRado community that Dan has fostered that it has even been possible to engage an audience and have a forum to create content for the broader Neo ecosystem. So I am pretty psyched to have had a chance to sit down with Dan and discuss his background and role in the Colorado blockchain community and the unique culture that Colorado offers the blockchain industry. We then delved a little bit into his collaborative efforts into state government projects and what public blockchains can offer state level governments and how NEO could potentially fulfill that role. Then Dan shares a few words about his perspective of NEO Colorado. We also talk about attracting developers from various blockchains and identifying what their interests might be. And lastly, Dan discusses some of his conversations with Tyler Adams from COZ and Moonlight and how those teams and products can be leveraged for state-level initiatives, uh, particularly uh, using identity on the blockchain as an example. So I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I enjoyed having it. So I'm actually super psyched, Dan, because you're the first person from the Colorado community that we've brought on to the Neo News Today podcast. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm honored to be here. Um, so I know you for a, about a year and a half now, but our listeners definitely uh, might not have heard of you before. So who, who are you? What is your background? And how and when did you get involved in the blockchain industry? Okay, so my name is Dan Shields. And I uh, Really, what I like to consider myself, I like to call myself, is the cheerleader for all things blockchain and cryptocurrency here in the Colorado area. Or as we like to affectionately call it, is our little community is Cryptorado. Um, so what I do is a lot of evangelism and education. And uh, putting events together is one of the things that I do spend most of my time on, as well as then um, generally going out and doing the hard work of, uh, I guess you could say, spreading the word of all this stuff, right? Um, so developer education is one thing I'm really passionate about, but also getting uh, people just using cryptocurrency and uh, understanding how to use it safely and confidently. So Cryptorado is really the community arm of what I do. I also do some consulting independently, and I'm starting the OPI. Um, we're calling uh, it's the open economy initiative. This is really to try and jumpstart uh, or kickstart, whatever you might want to call it, the crypto commerce here locally so that we can actually start using it uh, as a means of payment for everyday things um, and getting people set up to do that, to replace their typical banking infrastructure. So a lot of the courses are aimed that we're developing towards being your own bank, replacing all those things that you might need. Awesome. So you've done a lot for the Colorado blockchain community. You sort of also act as uh, I would call it the glue towards all the community developer or the community groups that host various meetups about uh, different blockchains, Ethereum, um, uh, Bitcoin, obviously Neo, and then there are other uh, community groups as well that are delving into like mesh networks and things of this nature. So I was wondering if you could go uh, just a little bit deeper into what your role looks like for 
providing a forum so that each of the blockchain community groups in Colorado can kind of pay attention to what's going on with other groups and just sort of how the whole blockchain community can kind of stay connected through the the calendar and services you offer through CryptoRado.org. Yeah, so that website uh, is is definitely what I'm trying to do to provide a service to everyone, to have us a common place that anyone can get connected to us. So I try my very best not to be a maximalist, although I am definitely fond of the Ethereum community um, in the sense that that's kind of where I got most of my start and <clears throat> happens to be the majority of people around here um, that, that came before me. And it kind of raised me up into the position that I am now. Um, but in general, trying to uh, get us all on the same page in the same room, just talking. Uh, one of the things that I've seen online is this just rampant maximalist toxicity, right? And that's almost exclusive to the online space. I know that, like, for instance, last year, we had a really great uh, sit down with talking about EOS and NEO and Ethereum, like what, and just comparing and contrasting, what are the differences? Mm -hmm. Why might you choose one over the other? And really the thing that's most inspiring to me is like, what was the community like? What are the people like in these different spaces? Because uh, <clears throat> in my mind, the people are the absolute most important thing in this entire space. The communities that are behind these different projects and platforms, they all have a very different feel and they all have a very different way to attract generally different audiences. And that's the, again, that's, that's what I'm about is onboarding people as much as I can. There's not one, you know, flavor that everybody likes. So getting as much as I can, uh, the exposure to different flavors. Absolutely. Yeah. Not one meetup that I've gone to for any, any blockchain, EOS, Ethereum, Bitcoin, or NEO, have I come across any sort of like maximalism or, or toxic attitudes? Um, yeah. and, and I'm wondering if that's um, something that happens uh, across the board internationally, or if that's just something about the culture of Colorado. So I'm wondering if you could kind of like touch upon Colorado's culture here focusing on two separate aspects like what is the unique political culture here in Colorado and then also what is the unique blockchain culture that we've cultivated and maybe how do the two interact with one another yeah so I think that one of the things that I have seen and admittedly I am pretty cloistered here in Colorado I don't get out too much but what I have seen is that we have a very uh, welcoming and generally non-combative environment for competition. So uh, we are very much more uh, people who want to collaborate, right? And we want everyone to succeed as opposed to winning the game. We kind of just want to play it with you. So here politically, I'd say that uh, the term that you'll hear is purplish, where we aren't too right-wing or we aren't too left-wing leaning and uh, generally more accepting. And, uh, generally more inquisitive and curious to hear about your opinion than to just shut you down. So this like toxic maximalism in the crypto space, but also just politically in general, isn't, isn't nearly as, as virulent as I've seen in other places necessarily. So it's, it's a real special spot. I think in the crypto culture here, specifically in our little community, um, that seems to be enhanced even more in the sense that um, that's something I really try and drive uh, is in drawing in that specific demographic, people who are really excited and passionate about making a, a societal change with these technologies, more than just making money, more than just making cool technology. It's driving for a purpose or for a mission, right? And uh, it's for making a better world in some way. And that's, that's really cool. So try and get that seed planted. But naturally, it, you see that a lot with just the people who are here. There's a lot of people who care about that. Yeah, totally. Um, so beyond just sort of like the community grassroots um, efforts that you've made and sort of providing a forum for uh, various blockchain community groups to be able to communicate with um, Colorado blockchain members, You've also sort of taken the initiative at some state level government based efforts. So I'm wondering if you could kind of talk about what those efforts have looked like in Colorado. Have you um, maybe you've reached out into Wyoming a little bit as well? 
Um, and I'm also wondering, based off of your experience, what are the potential roles that uh, that public blockchains can can offer uh, these governments? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the cool things about Colorado in particular um, is we have a very progressive um, environment legislatively here. Uh, our governor, uh, Jared Polis, is uh, had, I believe last year, a direct quote was something along the lines of, wants to see Colorado become the hub for blockchain innovation. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's a pretty strong statement. Um, and he's backed that up by all last year, we had the Colorado Blockchain Council. So this was trying to enact, and in fact, they did pass the Digital Token Act. So giving you effectively a safe haven that if you can prove uh, a, a particular set of things that are described in the bill, that you could be exempt from securities laws here in Colorado, and the state would come to, to your aid to protect you if they granted you this exception. So um, for launching public cryptocurrency-backed um, blockchains and doing token sales and things like this, uh, Co Colorado's trying to stand as a leader, at least in that segment, but well beyond that now. In fact, this is uh, something that's just coming to fruition. The government really wants to explore uh, blockchain solutions for uh, like public data infrastructure in particular. So um, we're about to launch a bountathon is what we're calling it and feels and looks a lot like a hackathon that's extended over the period of a few weeks, maybe a few months to get some projects going for each department in the state to submit projects to get done uh, in some uh, light using blockchain. Mm -hmm. So, well, one of the coolest things about public infrastructure for the government, right, is naturally we want our government to be transparent and accountable. So that infrastructure is already set up for that, that it can't be manipulated or tampered by anybody using the system, at least naturally is generally what we think about public blockchains. So um, I know that it's really exciting to think about which particular platforms the government could use uh, and really try and pilot on top of that particular platform as a statewide initiative to have an ecosystem developed on this. Uh, so um, that's that's up and coming. I think we'll see more than just being progressive for people to play with this stuff in the state. The state itself is going to be a front runner in trying to implement these technologies. And if I'm if I'm hearing you correctly, it sounds like that the state is exploring a wide variety of public blockchains and infrastructure. It's not just uh, one specific technology or network. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's not set in stone in the least. Yeah. Um. Very cool. So I kind of want to transition a little bit into talking about NEO. Um, you were actually instrumental in helping get NEO Colorado off the ground more in the sense that you just provided um, kind of like the, the stoke of the fire. You just made sure that the, the embers kept burning, um, which, which you provide for a lot of different community groups. But I wanted to just hear um, your insights about what Neo Colorado um, kind of has offered the Colorado blockchain community and um, maybe how uh, meetups like Neo Colorado or ETH Denver can um, help local projects uh, want to participate in the public blockchains that these meetups are about. Yeah. So I think one of the special things that I've really seen you develop in Neo Colorado, Dylan, is uh, this kind of really inclusive sense that you know, there's nobody who's too low level. Like you're very accepting of new people. You're trying to uh, expand to a broad audience, and uh, you don't have uh, a sense of um, maybe uh, what authoritarianism. Like it's some, sometimes you'll see this at the Bitcoin or the Ethereum meetups. Is that like, no, really, we're we're the right ones to use. Like in the end, it's not a maximalist, but it's definitely very strong in favor. Mm -hmm. So you're very strong in favor of Neo. But that doesn't come off um, as it is in the air. It's not in the vibe. Uh, you also provided, and Neo Colorado in particular, some very pointed, very targeted uh, content that really helps onboard people, which I really like a lot. So you you thought very deeply about how can I most effectively deliver something useful and valuable uh, for the people who attend to this. Um, so that's definitely unique. Whereas there's a lot of less focused, less necessarily um catering to a specific demographic to give them something valuable it's just well let's get together and do something mm -hmm. so that's that's a unique feature for sure 
Well, 2020, uh, hopefully we get to provide some some further uh, pointed con- content based off of these discussions I've had with, with you and other community members. Um, and, and given the fact that you do attend so many meetups and you are so objective and open-minded when you're attending these meetups, um, I, I would like to hear what do you think your thoughts are on what the hangups are for developers from, say, Ethereum or EOS and what those hangups might be with, say, trying to use NEO as a public blockchain to build on top of? Or, yeah. or what, what kind of like perspective uh, have, do you see in that realm? So I'd say that, uh, I don't know if you've heard about uh, this from the Ethereum space, because that's what I'm particularly more familiar with. Uh, Joe Lubin's 1 million devs uh, push. Mm-hmm. You heard of this? Yeah. So um, in my mind, that's that's a little bit kind of ludicrous in the sense that I don't really see that much drive, especially for protocol level development, which I think he's, he's in, kind of implying. But application level, like how are we going to get app, or DAP devs um, to use a particular platform? In my mind, it's a little bit of a chicken and egg thing is that there's not really enough demand for dApps in general yet to motivate people to want to get into the industry. So in my mind, it's it's a little bit about education, but more importantly, it's simply about awareness. Like most people still don't know about blockchain or know why they should care about using it um, and then really even how to get started. So if anything, I think it's it's still that there's a lot of groundwork to do just about basic education, um, especially for the technically minded folk. And more in particular is uh, if you're going to have all these developers working on something, they got to eat, right? So developing applications that can pay bills, that can um, really make companies out of, but we still need to have a lot more of those start to start cropping up so that your job prospects look good here for the general person to care versus the person who really is motivated by just intrinsically some of these values that we've uh, you know, talked about. Absolutely. And, and again, from, from your observations, what do you think might prevent a developer from trying to build on a new, a new blockchain like Neo? Do you think it's access to resources and materials? Is there a, a particular governance structure that you think developers are more oriented to? Is it um, is is a barrier of time uh, invested in learning a new platform? Is is that something that you think might hold devs back from trying to develop on on new public blockchain infrastructure? Yeah, I think it may be a little bit of all of that. Is that uh, generally still the majority of documentation can be a little bit hard to piece through, and the concepts still just understanding. Not necessarily how do I program a particular smart contract, it's why do I do it, right? Like what are the key aspects that are critical in developing a a DAP? What needs to sit on a blockchain versus a traditional architecture? So in my mind, it's, it's understanding and becoming aware simply of what tools are available and uh, then specifically the instances you want to use them and why it's a huge value add to do that versus whatever you, you already know. Um, so it, in my mind, it's, it's not just learning like a new language, right? And it's understanding a new paradigm, mm-hmm. uh, which is pretty unique here. And that's probably part of why we see so much uh, lag in trying to onboard uh, generally new use cases for this stuff. Absolutely. Um, in recent months, you've been kind of having uh, cursory or high level conversations with Tyler Adams. And of course, uh, for NNT podcast listeners, uh, Tyler Adams is a co-founder of City of Zion and also a co-founder of the Moonlight um, Distributed Workforce Platform. So Dan, as you've just kind of had these surface level conversations with Tyler, what are some of the broader topics you two have touched upon and how uh, to potentially integrate uh, the NEO blockchain uh, into some of these ideas and, and solutions for the state? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Tyler and I, we talked a lot about COZ in particular is a thought leader and really a powerhouse of developer talent that not only understands the core of NEO, so a, a public blockchain infrastructure that really has a lot of interesting aspects, especially for government use, um, but 
then also it bridges into the application development. So um, there is an amazing amount of potential support that uh, COZ in particular could provide for an initiative to develop an ecosystem play. Mm -hmm. So especially at the state level, there's a lot of reasons to believe that um, with something like COZ and because Tyler is awesome and because they're here in Colorado, at least Tyler is and some of the other parts of the team are, um, let's, let's shoot for that. Like, um, at least to, to get some experiments working on top of Neo in particular. Not to, not to put you on the spot or anything, but is there a particular uh, use case you, you guys have, uh, kind of like thought through as a mental experiment? So I know that uh, Moonlight is an interesting uh, idea to try and get some integrations because it's already live. Uh, so talking about uh, integrations for identity on chain and then interoperable with other things that the state might want. So in terms of specifics, I really don't know in this Bountathon that we mentioned what kind of solutions they're looking for just yet. Um, but in general, you can think about what does the government maybe want to use a blockchain infrastructure for? So like voting, and for uh, generally for identity management, for things like your driver's license or state ID, things like that. Um, so my guess is that's kind of the first flush that we'll see um, in this this first bountathon. And and of course, uh, Governor Polis has stated that he would like to integrate blockchain uh, into voting processes. And oh. the state of Colorado recently released a i believe it's alpha or beta for for driver's licenses being listed online yeah yeah so now you can have your uh driver's license with optionally displayed fields uh that's now starting to be accepted so you can say this is just my name and my age but you don't need to know my uh you know uh, specific birth date or my home address if i'm just coming into a bar right and want to prove that i can drink alcohol Mm -hmm. so that's that's starting to come online in a strong way, but the blockchain infrastructure isn't there yet. So uh, they're interested in getting more robustness behind this for sure. So it sounds like uh, 2020 is going to be an exciting year for happenings here in Colorado. Um, I would I'm wondering. Uh, I'm cognizant of your time, so I'm wondering if you'd like to mention um, anything to the Colorado blockchain community or the Neo News Today podcast listenership. Um, is there anything you want to bring up that we haven't covered? Um, I'd say that mostly I just want to invite everybody who's listening to come and join us. Cryptorado.org has a calendar that lists just about everything that I'm aware of going on here in the Denver and Boulder area primarily. Um, but this is a great place to come and visit. In particular, and it sounds maybe like the, uh, the slant is more towards Ethereum. But Ethereum Denver and ethdenver.com is the place you can go to find this place is one of the biggest events of the year that really is blockchain agnostic. We'd love for you to come out, visit us and see what we're really all about. Experience this culture and come to one of the most fun times of the year in my mind. We'll have something like 2,000 people from all over the world join us. Uh, It's a big hackathon, but it's also a big festival to just celebrate uh, the culture and community that is here. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to wearing my Neo sweatshirt at East Denver. Yeah, you damn well better. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Dan, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. As always, it was great catching up with you and speaking with you. Hey, likewise. I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much. All right. Cheers. Well, what did you think of that episode? I always love to catch up with Dan and hear about what he's been up to. I thought his perspective on integrating blockchain with state government level initiatives was refreshing, particularly with a role uh, blockchain like Neo might be able to fulfill. And it was also great to hear a local blockchain advocate talk about COZ and how a Neo-based community developer group might be able to coordinate on Colorado-based projects. To keep up to date with Dan, you can follow him on Twitter at NukeManDan, as well as on the messaging application Keybase, also at NukeManDan. Or you can email him at dan at cryptorado.org. That's C-R-Y-P-T-O-R-A-D-O dot org. 
And as always, to keep up to date with ecosystem news, visit www.neonewstoday.com and feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive the latest Neo News Today podcast episodes as they're released. Thank you so much for listening and we look forward to catching you next time.